Hey guys, Thunder E here, and yes, I've got a ton of mobile game controls in front of me, and you're wondering why. Well, it's very simple. I'm gonna show you which I think are the best mobile controllers for you, and I have them laying in front of me. Now, mobile gaming is very big, and there are a lot of controllers on the market. There's a ton on Amazon you can select from, but I think you'll find some of the best ones right here. Now, in terms of pricing, all of them are priced either $99 or lower. So price point is sub $100 from these controllers. And I'm breaking them into a couple of categories. I've got Bluetooth controllers. Uh, then I have got the expandable controllers uh, and co expandable compact controllers, as well as also the just pure expandable controllers. So let us start off with the very first controller. It's a Bluetooth controller. And this is the Razer Jungle Cat. Now, if you guys know the Jungle Cat quite well, it's one of the first uh, controllers Razer released maybe like four years ago. Right now, it's probably about 35 bucks. I like it because it's a Bluetooth controller. It's very easy to use. You can slide this into your pocket. You've got all your buttons right there. Uh, on the downside, it does have two USB ports, so you have to charge each section of the controller separately because they slide out like Joy-Cons for uh, the Switch. Again, a solid controller unit, and I think one for someone who just wants something that they can connect to your smartphone to use. Now, the next controller is the Turtle Beach Atom. Now, the Atom is very different. It's a newer controller. This is the Xbox variant here because this is a collapsible controller. It's compact, but also expands out. As you can see, you can only see the joystick on one side. All you have to do is pull and then boom, you now have, of course, a double, two sides of a controller, which can, of course, expand open to fit your smartphone and you are good to go. It's got magnets, uh, which kind of keep it together. This connects via Bluetooth, as you see, it has a USB port and you can also just attach it back and you're good to go. You've got triggers and the one thing about the Atom I do like is that with the button configuration, you can go into the software uh, on your mobile device and you can customize the sensitivity, drift, all that fun stuff so you get a much better response, especially while Bluetooth because of course there's always latency. Very nice controller for that aspect. Now the other two here are expandable controllers but they're also Bluetooth controllers. Uh, this is first, this is the Nakon uh, MGX. The MGX is a Bluetooth controller that has kind of like a Dreamcast look to it. So it reminds me of the old school Dreamcast. You've got padding at the back, so it's kind of grips here. Uh, you've got triggers that of course have some tension to it. Uh, and of course your shoulder buttons are nice. Really solid controller, expands out pretty open. Now of course this will fit your Galaxy device quite easily. So say your Galaxy uh, S22 Ultra, which is a very big phone, you can see, boom, it fits it, not a problem. But you're thinking, what about foldables, right? Well. This will also fit your uh, Galaxy Z Fold 4 without any stress. So I'm gonna just do this right in front of you and boom, look at that. And there you have it. So you can see it fits it well. I do like this for the Fold because it's got a wider base so it's more balanced and you can connect via Bluetooth and use your Fold on the road. This is a really nice controller for the Fold and I think it's just as real estate is also pretty solid. Now, another controller that I showcased on the Fold about a year or two ago is the Narcon MGX Pro. Now, the Pro has a controller layout look, so it looks like a traditional gaming controller. Uh, I do like the joysticks because they have some really good tension to them. And of course, the triggers have some tension as well. Now, this opens up pretty wide. So for instance, I take, of course, my Galaxy Z Fold 4 again, open this up, and you can see it here, boom, it works. So I have my folds, I can game, um, and uh, again, a Bluetooth controller. Now the one downside is that it's a bit wide, so you do have to have a wider stance of grip. And if you have to touch anything within your game, you've got a further distance to go, but still a very solid controller. Next controllers are the expandable controllers. Now this is the Razer Kishi. Kishi took the market by storm, Razer's controller here is one that collapses down into itself, but also expands out. You can see this is the iOS variant, and I can take my iPhone, I can connect it, boom, and look at that, done. 
I have a full flesh controller. Think about the Kishi's that it fit almost every size smartphone and the fact that you can use it this way, access to the triggers, open that up, and then you'll be able to go ahead and collapse it back into itself is where the Kishi really shines. Now, the one downside of the Kishi is that it's not as intuitive to kind of put back together. It's something that you just kind of have to try to get it to work. As you can see, I am failing here in this video. And uh, yeah, it's just, works that way. So you kind of get the idea, boom, there you go. It actually works. So you can do that on iOS as well as also the Android version of this. And the Kishi is nice because you can break it down and it's a smaller controller. And you can throw this into your backpack, uh, but you can open it up and it'll use on any device that you want. Now, this is what I call the GameSaw section. So GameSaw has a ton of controllers here. Uh, and the cool thing about their controllers is that they do come with carrying cases the X2, this is another X2 here, this is the X2 Pro. They all have cases for the controllers, which is nice. Um, and I like that it comes with that because some of the controllers are big. They have Bluetooth controllers, but these are their USB or Lightning controllers. You have a Lightning variant here. And with their controllers, there is some mobility of the uh, Lightning or USB port so that it doesn't damage your device in case you move. Now the controllers themselves have a interesting layout. You can see right now you connect it from the left, on the left on these two, and then on the right on that. You do have grips at the back, which is pretty nice. And there's good tension. This is a bit clicky here, but there's good tension on the uh, shoulders as well as the um, triggers on the controllers. Then you have, this is the X2 Pro, which is a newer controller that came out recently. I like this because it's got some really nice tension on here. I like it because it has some really good, nice tension on here, opens up, very nice wide base. You can see the Xbox logo. And again, because this is newer, this also has remappable buttons. You can use the GameSar software to go ahead and remap those buttons for this at the back uh, and start gaming. Now, the best controller out of all of them, I think, is this one here. This is the GameSaw X3 Pro. This is a very different controller. Now, you're looking at it here, you're going, okay, what's really special? Kind of looks like the other ones. First of all, it's more customizable. You can change, of course, your thumbsticks. I have a shorter thumbstick and a longer one there. I can change my D-pad from a traditional D-pad to more hexagonal D-pad over here. So I have that. And then I've got some nice triggers, shoulder buttons all together. But then you see this plate here. This is a cooling plate because you can actually turn the fan on. So you have to plug it in. That is a downside. Uh, but then you have a cooling fan that you can actually game with. And it does a really good job at keeping your device cool. So say, for instance, you're playing with your Galaxy device. I can open this up. I can align my Galaxy, and while I'm gaming, I can also cool my device down. So which means I can game for longer sessions of time, and as an Android gamer, and you know a lot of gamers out there play for quite long sessions, this is really important, and I think it works out really, really well. And finally, the section over here, this is what I call the Backbone Arena. Now, Backbone came out with a controller about a year and a half ago, maybe two, the original Backbone controller solid, super lightweight. This is probably one of the lightest controllers here, um, other than maybe the Jungle Cat, but it opens up, it expands, it connected via lightning, and it has some really nice button configuration. So they came out with that, and then they came out with a PlayStation variant, which got a lot of people excited, because it looks like a PlayStation controller. Nice, again, look and feel. You've got your standard buttons. You have a screenshot button. You have a backbone controller button. We'll get that to that in a second. And then finally, they have an Android version. So this, of course, covers all the bases. Now, Backbone really excels not just with the controller itself, but also with that specific button. That button there allows you to do a couple of things, actually both of them. Take a screenshot, also quick record your gameplay, but this other button here allows you to go into the Backbone software. And that gives you so much more flexibility with this. With the Backbone software, you can go in, look at the games you're playing, you can select new games, find games that work, you can go into your gaming services, all that stuff, very fast, very fluid. It is probably one of the best software systems on any of these mobile controllers. 
But not to be outdone, Razer said, yes, we can do that too. And Razer has the Razer Kishi V2. Again, super light, just like the backbone. You do have the Android and the iOS variant of these controllers. Now, what I like about the Razer is that you do have two extra buttons. Uh, here, we do have on the iOS version an R4 and the L4. And then on Android, it's just called M1 and M2. Again, same extra buttons, which can be remapped in the Razer software. Now, the Razer software is, of course, indicated by that button. I wish they made it green, actually, you know? But that being said, that, that button opens up the software, gives you some of the same functionality like the backbone, being able to go in to find your gaming services, jump into games that it supports and play, all that kind of fun stuff, which is quite interesting. Um, but I say the backbone still does that a little bit better. So you're looking at this and you're going, okay, you've shown us a ton of controllers and they all uh, satisfy a specific need. I would say my favorite controller out of all of them to use is the Backbone controller, uh, just because it just works really well on all my devices and the software is very, very smooth. I definitely like that. Um, but when I want to play for long gaming sessions, the GameStar X3 Pro, that cooling really does a good job. But honestly, any of these controllers will do your needs for you. And also their price points are really uh, competitive and attractive where you have things from as low as 35 all the way to $99. And any of these will solve any of your gaming needs for controllers. Some are better than others, and you can see it quite clearly here. So if you guys have any questions or any comments, or you wanna pick up any of these controllers, use our links down below. And uh, if there's any other controllers you want me to try out, I'll definitely do it here on the channel. This is Thunder E saying thank you, and always enjoy your entertainment.